Hello friends, welcome back. Today we will be set, we do something called set up the environment. The following challenge will make use of chat.pug file. So in your routes.js file, add a get route pointing to forward slash chat, which makes use of ensure authenticated and renders chat.pug with uh, user rec.user passed as an argument to the response. Now alter your existing auth github callback route to set the rec.session.user ID to equal rec.user ID and redirect to chat. Add HTTP and socket IO as dependencies and require instance uh, slash instantiate them in your server defined as follows. Okay, now that the HTTP server is mounted on the Express app, you need to listen to the HTTP server and change the line app.listen to HTTP listen. On the Express app, you'll need to change the HTTP server. Okay, the first thing needed, needing to be handled is listening for a few connections from the client. And the on keyword does just that, listen for a specific event. It requires two arguments, a string containing the title of the event that emitted and a function with which the data is passed through. In the case of our connection listener, we use socket to define the data in the second argument. A socket is an individual client who is connected. To listen for connections on your server, add the following within your database connection. io.onConnection, and then we're gonna pass in a socket, and then it says a user has connected. Um, now for the client to connect, you just need to add the following to your client.js, which is loaded by, by the page after you've authenticated. So we let socket IO equal to IO, uh, we, uh, IO executed. The comment suppresses the error you would normally see since IO is not defined in the file. Oh, so I guess this comment's required. We've already added a, a, a reliable CDN to socket IO, IO library on the page in chat Dot pug. Now try loading up your app and authenticate, and you should see it in your server console. A user has connected. Note IO works only when connected to a socket hosted on the same URL slash server. For connecting to an external socket hosted elsewhere, you would need to use io.connect to the URL. Okay, so this is kind of a big long checklist, so I probably shouldn't have just read through the whole thing, but alas. The following changes will be made to your chat.pug file. The following challenges will make use of your chat.pug file. So here's where we have our chat.pug file. Um, it looks like we've got a title, meta stuff, a header, a socket chat room, and, and um, within it looks like we have a form and a logout button. Um, okay, so in your route.js file, so let's go to the route, routes.js file, um, add a get route pointing to chat. Okay, so app.get, app.route.get, um, jit. Okay, so I'm just h i j k g h i j k l route.get profile chat. Wait, we want to make this to um, forward ch pointing to forward slash chat. Okay, so that's a b c. I'm going to put it here. Um, cause I like to kind of keep them alphabetized, even though I know I'm not doing it right now. It's just something to keep in mind. And we're going to set this one to forward slash chat. Uh huh. And then route dot chat. And then we're going to make this a git request. Um, add a git route pointing to chat, which makes use of ensure authenticated. Okay. So, um, ensure authenticated. So we're going to use this guy. Uh, ensure authenticated and renders a chat.pub with rec.user passed as an argument and renders chat.pub. Okay, so where do we render another pug file just so we can see it? Uh, this would be how we would do that. res.render get ensure authenticated and then we're going to pass in a uh, rec and a res. And then within there, we're going to, um, yeah, what are we going to do here? We want to go res.render, and we're going to go process.cwd. This means, like, get the root URL, so localhost on our local one. Um, and now alter your, no, which makes use of ensure, and renders chat.pug. 
So here we want to render um, forward slash views, forward slash pug, forward slash chat. Uh, renders chat.pug with uh, user. Okay. And then uh, as our, because yeah, we're doing it just the same as down here. And so what we want to do is pass in a object with a uh, user. And we're going to set that equal to rec.user. That's it, rec.user. And then um, passed as an argument. Now alter your existing auth callback. So let's find our auth callback, auth callback. So that's this function here to set rec.session.userId. Well, rec and redirect to chat to set the rec.session user ID. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so what are we trying to hear? Now alter your existing auth GitHub callback, auth GitHub callback route to set the rec.session request.session dot user ID to equal request.session.id and redirect to chat. So what are they saying here? Rec.session to redirect to chat like this. Passport authenticate. Okay, so authenticate should go here. Should stay up here. And then we have a callback function here. And then this goes to the get. Okay, so this should be up here. Um, so, okay, I guess we, we want to go rec.session.userid is equal to rec.user.id. Um, so I'm just going to comment these up because they need to be uh, equalized, equal spaced. So rec.session.userid is we go to rec.userid and then we redirect to chat. All right, so I'm hoping that that's right. Um, and then say we wanna add HTTP and socket IO as dependencies. Okay, so what you should look up um, NPM JS. I don't think that we actually need to do H to download HTTP. That should just be part of node. Security holding package. It does say ins and ins uh, add as dependencies and instantiate them. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna open up our package JSON so you can see here. This does not have HTTP in it right now. Um, my guess is that this is gonna tell us to go npm install HTTP security holding package. npm i http okay so that's how you install it so i'm going to come over here npm install http and then let's search for socket.io as well looks like we found it here and as you can see http is there now and so now we've got socket.io um yeah there's a big bunch of documentation here but it looks like npm install socket.io is the way to install it. So there were zero vulnerabilities here, that's good. And so we'll do the same thing. We'll probably see socket.io popping up in here. I'm gonna PQRS, it'll probably be the last one. Um, cool. Socket.io 3.0, okay. And so because we used npm install, we don't need to uh, run npm install here after, because we've just used npm install to install them. And so, and we want to require instantiate them in your server as follows. So in our server, we want to have these guys here. So I'm going to copy these guys in here and we'll throw them in up at the top and I'll save that, which will restart our server. I'm pretty sure. And it looks like cannot access app before instantiation. Okay. So that tells me that here I'm using the app. We need to put the app actually below. So we need to have this guy and look, HTTP actually is passed into IO as well. So we need to keep them in this order. 
And so we'll just set them up like this. So now we wait for the app to be uh, created and then we create the server on the app re requiring the HTTP. So now that I save this, our server restarts um, because Nodemon restarts automatically for us. And it looks like it's running. Okay, so now that the HTTP server is server is mounted and the express app, you need to listen from the HTTP server. Change the line app.listen to HTTP.listen. Okay, so we so here we have app.listen. We need to change this to HTTP. And now I save that. Now that's at the bottom of it. And I'm still watching the terminal down here to see if anything broke. Um, it looks like everything's good. The first thing needing to be handled is listening for a new connection from the client. The on keyword does just that, listen for a specific event. It requires two arguments, a string containing the, the title, so on, a string containing the title of the event, which is emitted, which is a connection, and a function, in this example, it's a fun, uh, connection, and a function with which the data is passed through. So here we have a function, which, um, in which we have a parameter of socket, and it looks like it's just console logs for now. Passer. In the case of our connection listener, we use socket to define the data in the second argument. A socket is an individual client who is connected. To listen for connections on your server, add the following within your database connection. Okay, so to listen to connections to your server, that means we want to start within our server and we want to start doing that within our database connections. So I've just got that copied and I'm just going to paste it into here. Um, yeah, and now for the client to connect, you just need to add the following to your client.js, which is loaded by the page after you've authenticated. Client.js. Client.js, okay, that's in the public folder. Okay, so what does this mean specifically? Client.js is public JavaScript, which is being served to your client, and basically your server has created this um, uh, socket uh, integration and, and it's starting to listen so it's listening here but then what we want to do now is we want to set it up so your client is also listening meaning the person who's viewing the web page so the, their, their web page needs to have the same uh, JavaScript listening for your socket and so that they can transfer information back and forth this is what, how you get live chat um, and so yeah we're going to go to client.js which is in the public folder and it looks like we're going to add this in here somewhere. So here, form submission with a new button, send message prevent. It doesn't tell us where, which is loaded in the page after you've authenticated. Well, we're defining let socket, and you can see in here, it doesn't even say anything about socket. Um, yeah, I'm guessing that you're going to put it up here. And I'm just going to fix the spacing here because that's my style. Because <clears throat> I like to have clean, consistent code. Okay, so we'll save that and see what happens. And then, okay, so you see this database reset. Nothing has been destroyed, so we're pretty good on there. Okay, so here's what's happening is we're just saying IO on connection makes socket equal to this. And a user has connected. Um, Let's see if we see a user has connected. If we go to localhost, uh, let's refresh. Oh, wait. Okay. Let me see if there's anything else. The comment suppresses the error you would normally see since IO is not defined in the file. We've already added a reliable CDN to the socket IO library on the page in chat.pug. Uh, form submit message to send. Interesting. I don't see that. But, um, We've already added a reliable CD in Socket.io library. Now try loading up your app and authenticate, and you should see in your server a user has connected. Okay, so localhost, go to sign in with GitHub, and internal server error. All right, so now I feel like I've done everything properly here. I wonder if we were to... No, I feel like we've done everything properly here. So what I want to do is push this code up and see if it passes the test. So git status, git add everything, git commit, dash m, and then I'm going to say add h, uh, http and socket.io packages and implement the rough working versions. 
Okay, so git push Heroku master. And I think that there's a good chance that this is going to work in production, but it won't work uh, locally. Their internal server error could be, well, you see, it sent me to um, Heroku uh, or Desert, Desolate Savannah, which is my production app, whereas I started on the local host. And so I think that there's a good chance that that's getting mixed up. Um, and so maybe I need to fix that. Um, I just can't know for sure right now. But we're waiting for the um, production app to uh, spin up. Um, the way that I can fix this is try to make it so that it works locally as well as it does um, publicly. Uh, but for now, we don't need to worry about that. Um, Desolate Savannah is the name of the production web app, and our code has been pushed up there. And so now if I refresh it, um, let's see, if I inspect the console, nothing's there yet. Um, if I log in with GitHub, it looks like we have another internal service error. Um, Dev tools failed to load source. Okay. Now, I don't know if this means, but look, we did get forwarded to chat. So maybe this is working. Um, I, I know that these uh, free code camp ones don't always work exactly the right. So let's see what happens. It run the tests and it looks like we're successful. Now, I went through just a second ago, I went through and started debugging this pretty deeply and it went down a long rabbit hole of just trying to figure out some weird database stuff and things like that. Essentially, I think that the problem is we haven't set our database up correctly and so we're not creating a new user the way we're supposed to. So I would not get hung up on the fact that you're getting internal service errors when you do this in production just yet. Uh, I just say hang in there. Hopefully the uh, tutorial will solve it. Uh, we'll get there uh, around the end. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next lesson.